One Manhattan street corner seems to be a crossroads for America. Lloyd Kramer explains when we come back. This uh, is going to be just a little. Long time, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. Nah, we don't know. So these people got For being a city where the nightlife never stops, Lloyd Kramer's met one man who's an endearing part of that life and who knows his audience like a book. Thank you. News is news. Read all about it. Same old baloney. New date. Thank you. So 30 out of 20, out of 50. Thanks a lot. Hi, you, sweetie. Somebody, isn't that nice? I he was calls himself right Tish. How have you been? Right away. Good. It's yourself? Great. Which is what others call him. Who's next? Those who know him. Benton Wigley, you goof. Hiya, Jeffy. And a lot of people know Tish. Hiya, baby. New Yorker? Right here. This is the West Village, 8th Street on the west side of 6th. 35. Thank you. Is it the same old bylines? Or same, is it? same old stuff, sir, believe me. Same half-truths, innuendos, everything. Where Tish has been playing one-night stands at this all-night newsstand going on 15 years. You've done a lot of other things, too. <laughs> sure have, yeah. That's right. How about the ones that we can talk about? Oh, you can talk about all the things I've done. All of them were just, I mean, except for the personal things at home, you can talk about all of them. Uh, drove a cab, attended bar, uh, took tolls on a bridge, worked at a cabana club. Uh, what the hell else? Hiya, baby! You knew they'd get me, huh? Thank you. Newspapers, magazines, he's got everything, it seems, but unidentified flying objects. No, okay? No, that one I don't have. That's, uh, that's unidentified flying objects? Well, yeah, we'd be out. Uh, no. Uh, I'm afraid that that's a little more than I handle. He's someone who knows his customers. I gotta tell you what happened, man. I get jumped the other day. By what? Six people. And he knows his customers because he I takes the time. Enough. Well, I'm just glad you're all right. I couldn't believe it. I ran the... Where was this? In Brooklyn. But let me tell you something. How's your hand? My hand's all right. Well, Did uh, you get hurt again? I ran this pretty good white folks. I'm not lying to you. Really? Oh, yeah. Damn good. Well, 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 send them over here. We'll change their minds. We don't want to. I talked to you to Bob. <laughs> you grew up in New York? Oh, yeah. I was born in I'm a native. The first place I remember was 99th Street and Park Avenue. I used to sit in the fire escape, watch the trains come out of the tunnel. That's where I was, first. That's where I was born. And about seven years old, we moved to Far Rockaway, which was the place I learned everything I knew until I was smart enough to get the hell out of there and learn some other things. You got one, you got five. Thank you. Thanks a lot. He's a refuge of sorts for the regulars who want tomorrow's news the night before. I mean, the whole key for uh, information is timing. Fine, one, two, three, four. Although, says Tish, it's not like it used to be. Years ago, the news used to come out at 8 o'clock. So you'd get a line down the block. They all knew each other. It was a social event. People would come, they'd all stand on the line, we, they would talk to each other. If the paper was late, I would call up. If I found out what was, what was wrong with the paper, I would come out and I would make an announcement to this entire crowd. Folks, just call them up, it's not coming. All right, thanks, man. people just kind of go off. He brings to his tasks an appetite not for newsprint. Yesterday's news, nobody wants it. Who wants yesterday's papers? Were you a news junkie as a kid? No, I don't read this stuff. You do now, though. I look at the pictures in the New York Times. Really? <laughs> and I do the crossword puzzle. I'm, I can't help myself. He's no more and certainly nothing less than a curious person. Are you a big reader otherwise? Yeah, thanks. Novels. History. I'm reading something now called the Lunatic Express. It's about the building of a railway from the eastern coast of Africa into Lake Victoria back in the 1800s. It's absolutely wonderful. Buck 75 out of a deuce. To some, he's just a free spirit with a feeling for the street. You know, if you come down to press, he goes, oh, what's the matter? You know, and you could tell him your problem, and he cheers you up, he cheers you up. How are you doing? Pretty good, yourself? Good, glad to see you again. Nice to see you. <laughs> Everyone knows him, down to the bum, the wino that hangs out over here, he knows him. Look. <laughs> And if you hang around long enough, he'll tell you, you might even meet Pete. Right. I own six bucks. Tomorrow night, yeah, do you see me for the you six will. bucks or you don't see me? As long as I owe you, you'll never be broke. Come on, you can pay me on television. What's going on here? You can pay me on television and then I'll... <laughs> Pay him on television. You need a few laughs, a little conversation, take yourself down to West 8th Street. That's you know, right. Just hang out. You know? That's not bad. That's mm -hmm. live at Fiverr. Lloyd Kramer introduced us to a man who has become part of Manhattan's nightlife. He operates an all-night newsstand, and he's sought out for himself as much as for his papers and magazines. He's also sought out by people who others might not want to hear from. More from Lloyd. 
Let's see if we can get this organized. Hello, Albert. Hello. I'm good. Yourself? Good. Thanks, baby. Music has its Madonna. In fashion, there's Halston. And in the world of New York newsstands, stands Tish. Thanks, baby. What's my last name? I don't use the first one. Well, that's a long story. You don't want to hear it. It's boring. I mean, I, I told my father once that the names weren't working out. He said he was very sorry. He hadn't thought of that when he gave them to me. I had an aunt who hated the name Martin. So I said, out of heck with this, you know? Tish is enough. Everyone knows him. Down to the bum, the wino that hangs out over here, he knows him. Right? I know I own six bucks. Which is maybe why one of the more familiar denizens of his Greenwich Village domain is somebody Tish is satisfied to know only as Pete. I'm the village idiot. He is not. He just <laughs> pretends he's a village idiot. He's smart enough to get my $6 beggar. and not that's pay right, it back. Right, that's for right, sure. My office right here. That's right. That's his <laughs> office. He no, borrows $6 from me. He still beggar. owes it to me. Beggar. Beggar. I see him around all the time. So right? do I. <laughs> so do no, look, I. I. I need one cane, but I use two sometimes when I beg when I'm walking. See? When I'm sitting down, I put my arm in a sling. Now, this is slightly paralyzing the fingers, but I don't need a sling. Why do I wear a sling? Because <laughs> I, I make more money. That's right. Interesting human being. Thank you. OK? When he first came, when I first saw him, he, he was much crazier. He used to curse a lot, yell a lot. But he's a really articulate guy. Oh, very articulate. Right? Much more so than most of the people that I know. He lives on the street? I think he lives in the subway tunnels. You live in the street or in the subway? I live in the subway tunnel. It's different than living in the subway. Do you do it by choice? Yes. Yeah. Lives I always see him around. He always has a lot of dirt on his face. He rubs the dirt on him. I asked him this one day. I said, him, Peter, you're filthy. He said, oh, no. He says, I do that on purpose. I go down the subway tunnels. I take the soot. I rub it on myself. He, I said, why do you do that? These people give me more money that way. He had the cane in his hand, right? Right. So he come walking up with the cane. I said, then what's the matter? He says, he looks at me. What do you mean, what's the matter? I said, where do you got the cane? Throws it up in the air and starts dancing. He says, I only do that for the money. One dollar and 30 cents only. True, Tish's business is selling newspapers and making change. Daily news. But just as he notices that few people settle for that newspaper off the top, so too is Tish able to read someone like Pete. Come on. Yeah, I got, here. Yeah. look, what I do is I switch this on, and then I yell, personal foul, face mask, offense. Same thing they got in the, uh, in the big leagues. What the hell is that? It's a microphone. For that? Yeah. How are they going to hear anything? Through that. No, 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 that's, 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 really, that's for you. But for me, they want one on me so they can hear every golden word that comes from my mouth. Is it a radio? Tish is one of the good guys, says Pete. So much so that even though he could have a better job uptown in, a, in, a, in an office or something like that, I know this. He works here because he prefers this kind of livelihood, you know, and I, I can understand that because I'm, I'm a, I happen to be a chemist, and in a similar vein, I do this because that gets boring after a while of the same old thing. But living in the street the way I do and panhandling, it's an interesting life. Somebody looks at him and says, it's a bomb. Is it? The whole person. I mean, we've had more dealings back and forth, he and I. Good and bad. But doesn't it get cold in the winter? And Not and down in the tunnel. Tired of this no, just no. think about sea. The sea is only one or two inches underground, but it doesn't freeze. And if that temperature goes below the freezing point of water, the, the seed will die because the water inside it will yeah. freeze. What do you have against four walls? Nothing really. In fact, I almost, I got $3,000 from the government a couple of months ago, and I almost got an apartment because I wanted a dog, and I wouldn't expose a dog to this kind of life. I think that the world is made up of individuals. I always have. I don't think it's made up of groups, all right? This, to me, is a wonderful place to see individuality. Simply stated, what we have here speaks volumes about New York and the New York night. Oh, sure. The nighttime always brings something out. The sun goes down and things change. Don't forget, you don't have light. I mean, there's something very strange about standing on this planet, and it's pitch, it's pitch dark, except that we have all this technology so we can have a light on. But there's no light. It's the middle of the night. But I come down here every night because I'm safe here. Don't you see? I mean, there's been times, uh, 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 Tish or somebody in there, I get in an argument with somebody about money or they make a wisecrack to me or something and starting to get into something, and they'll just say, no, no, don't, don't worry about him. He's crazy. I don't look at life as being none of my business. I mean, he might not understand why you do anything you do, but he has the ability to say you have a right to do it, which is the foundation of this country, but a lot of people have forgotten that. Lloyd Kramer, News for New York. Is there part three? We're going back down there tomorrow night? I don't know. Uh, we may. We have to check. That's okay. live at five for the day. Thank you for watching. We hope you'll join us again tomorrow. Good night. Good night.